We are going to test the compass magnetic declination J-hook. Uh, we've been testing it for a while now. So um, we're going to demonstrate how it starts out really bad and how it takes about four or five minutes to get it to clean up. Okay, so here we go. Uh, notice the orientation of the box. Notice how it goes all the way down there. It's a little windy, but it's not too terrible. You notice when we take off, it, uh, well, other than some turbulence, it's going to hold its position pretty well. So that's never been a problem, even with the declination. It doesn't toilet bowl as soon as you take off. It's pretty good at that. But let's show you what it will do when it comes to hooking when you first turn it on. So I'm going to go straight out. I'm not going to put any left or right in on the stick at all. You'll notice not only did it start to drift off from the center, as soon as I let go, it did this nice big hook, and it's kind of started a little bit of a toilet bowl routine over there. It's about 15 to 20 feet off from where it should be. I'm going to bring it back, and it's going to do the opposite, and it's going to come right back to us. Whoop. right over our head. You see it comes back, right? It's doing a little toilet bowl routine right there. Okay, so that's the hook in a nutshell. Now we're gonna do some flying and it will eventually start to clean up, but it'll take a while. Here we go. I'm just gonna fly it around, do a little cruising, check out the neighborhood. Look for some hot chicks. All right, we're bringing it back down. We're going to do another test to see how much it cleaned up. With this little hooking thing. Basically flew for about, you know, about a minute and a half there, right? Okay, so we're going to line it up. And we should really kind of, you see where that, mountain is up in the distance, that's where we should be getting to if we go straight. Okay, going straight out. Boom. Okay. Yep. Still a pretty decent amount of hooking going on there. Yay haw. There's other things that I like that hook, but I don't like my phantom to hook. Alright, so we're going to actually give it a little bit of altitude because it lost some altitude there. We're going to bring it straight back. Okay. Notice how much space I've got here when I'm doing this. Because that's how much space I need. This thing hooks wildly. I've got a huge amount of space here side to side. If I'm in a smaller space, this thing could hook right into a tree. It could hook into a person. It's kind of dangerous, actually. So, the wind is kind of annoying, too. What's happening is the NASA is apparently learning as it's flying. So, as you're flying, the NASA is actually figuring out, it's going, wow, okay, this compass is off. And uh, when I'm going forward, I'm actually going to the left. That. So, the problem is that as soon as you switch off the Phantom, it forgets all of that, and so it's like Groundhog Day, and you got to start all over again. So, DJI, what you really need to do, I wouldn't mind if I had to do that the first time I bought the Phantom, that it would do that little hooking thing, and then, and then I would, uh, then it would just kind of stop after a couple minutes. It wouldn't be a problem. The fact that I have to do that every time that I turn this thing on is a problem. It's really annoying. And I can only imagine for those people who have, you know, the declination here in Los Angeles is 12. I can only imagine those people in Christchurch, New Zealand, or Greenland, or North
northern Canada, what the hell they're dealing with, where their declination is in the high teens or the 20s even. All right, so you see the box down there that just blew away? Well, okay, that was kind of lined up uh, there. What we're going to do is we're going to show you the course lock error. And the course lock basically, one thing that I didn't know about course lock is that you can only set it once. You can only set it when you take off. You can't switch into course lock and then it'll automatically fly on the course that you're currently on. Which, DJI, if you're listening, would be way cooler if I could have it fly the course that it's currently on when I switch into course lock. That would make way more sense. But apparently it only gets the course when you first turn it on. So, all right, putting it into course lock. It should fly straight. This is the direction we were in when we took off. But it's not going to. Let me get some altitude here first. All right, you can see we're pretty much lined up with it. Now watch where it goes. Look at that. That's a good 15 degrees, maybe almost 20 degrees off. That is so far away from where I was, from where I was pointing. So the reason why this happens is because again, the NASA is learning as it's flying. And so when we turned this thing on, that direction off to the left there, that's where the compass thought it thought was the right direction. That's where it thought it was pointing. And then only over time it learned the right way to go. So that's a good indication of how bad the error is. If you go into course lock and you go miles off in one direction, you're gonna see just how bad your compass is when you first turn your phantom on. It's kind of shocking. Because it's so far off. It's not even close. Alright. Let's see if the hook is gone. We've done eight minutes of flying. It should be gone by now. Okay. Flying straight. That's pretty darn straight. That's as good as it gets. That's what it should be when I turn it on. When I turn the Phantom on the second time, it shouldn't have to go through that hooking and learning and figuring stuff out unless maybe I've taken a 10 hour flight somewhere and I'm in a totally different area. But otherwise it should fly straight right out of the box. So this is, this is nice and straight. This is what it should do. Look at that, perfect. Beauteous. Bring it back some more. Pretty much right back to where we started from and it's perfect so that's what it should be that sunset is. That phantom rocking around in the sunset. Oh, 